thank all of you uh, for being here this evening. Uh, I'm impressed by the attendance, and it does show that we are an involved community. And I hope you, hope you have a lot of questions for us this evening. Uh, ultimately, that's why we're here, to provide information and education so you, we can allow the voters to make an informed decision when you go to the ballot on November 6th. I know what some of you are thinking, and yes, the charter is again going to be on the ballot. I've heard the term charter fatigue, and perhaps some of you have charter fatigue. I think I might have charter fatigue. <laughs> but this year is different, and Mike and I are here this evening to explain to you why and how it's different. I want to start with a little bit of history and background information. The 2018 Charter Review Commission was established by Mayor Kelly on March 6th, uh, March 8th rather, of this year. And each of us were appointed for the purpose of reviewing our city charter and specifically to find efficiencies and organizational improvements within the current form of uh, government to better serve the people of Saratoga Springs. As many of you know, Saratoga Springs operates under a commissioned form of government. And we have operated under that form of government since we were incorporated as a city in 1915, 103 years ago. In New York State, we're one of only two cities that utilizes a commission form of government. And across the entire nation, less than 5% operate under such form. Is the commission form of government unique? Yes. But so too is Saratoga Springs. And our uniqueness is one of the traits which defines us. Now, throughout our more than 100-year history as an incorporated city, there have been numerous attempts at changing our form of government. And each and every attempt was ultimately rejected by the people. In fact, the only successful Charter Review Commission our city has ever seen was the 2000 Commission, which was led by its chair, Harvey Fox. That commission focused not on trying to change our form of government, but instead on trying to improve our form of government. And indeed, that is what the 2018 Commission was established, to make improvements within the current form of government. Because with each and every failed attempt at change, we have missed the opportunity to make the continued and necessary improvements to our city that normally accompanies the passage of time. It has been 17 years since the voters of this city last approved updates and amendments to our city charter. In reality, it's been 17 years since the voters of this city have even had an opportunity to approve updates and amendments to our city charter under the commission form of government. And I think that's why the 2018 Charter Commission was established, because for lack of a better term, it's time. Now, who are we? The Charter Review Commission includes myself and Deputy Commissioner Sharp. In addition, it includes the uh, Deputy Commissioner of Public Safety, John Daly, who serves as our Secretary, and also includes Commissioner of Finance, Michelle Madigan, Commissioner of Public Works, Skip Sirocco, who's here this evening, Commissioner of Public Safety, Peter Martin, Commissioner of Accounts, John Frank, Deputy Mayor, Lisa Shields, Deputy Commissioner of Public Works, Joe O'Neill, Deputy Commissioner of Accounts, Mary Masterson. These are individuals who cumulatively have decades of experience serving you, have decades of experience working with our city charter, work with the document day in and day out, are familiar with our charter, and are capable of serving on this commission to provide the recommendations that we are providing. In addition, we were assisted by Trish Bush. Trish is my uh, assistant in City Hall. She is outstanding, and she served as the clerk of the Charter Review Commission. We had outside legal counsel from Hodgson Russ, which included Bob McLaughlin and Dick Weiss. They are experts in the field. And of course, Tony Izzo. Tony, as most of you know, is the assistant city attorney, and he has served in that capacity for more than 32 years. Tony, well, that's good. Tony also has the distinct, shall I say, credential of having served as legal counsel or having at least participated procedurally in the 2000 Charter Review Commission 
in the defunct 2005 Charter Review Commission, in the 2006 Charter Review Commission, in the 2012 Charter Referendum that was brought by uh, Citizen Petition, in the 2017 Charter Review Commission, and of course in the 2018 Charter Review Commission. If there is anyone in this room who has a valid claim of charter fatigue, it's Tony. <laughs> but he loves this stuff. And his input and advice has been invaluable and very much appreciated. Now let's talk about what we've done and what our work has consisted of. To date, the Charter Review Commission has held 20 meetings. We have submitted and received questionnaires to former council members and former deputies, as well as designated City Hall employees. We've conducted interviews with numerous individuals relevant to our review, and we have received extensive public comment at meetings, through written submissions, during public forums, and in response to both an informal and a formal survey, the latter of which received 250 responses. Before we get into what we're proposing, which Mike will uh, discuss with you, I just want to make clear what we are not proposing. And I can't emphasize enough, and number one, we are not proposing a change in the form of government. Uh, first and foremost, the certificate filed by the mayor did not allow us to do that. But that is the form of government that we have and the form of government that will remain at least during this time. We also didn't change the form and structure of the charter in part, and quite frankly, because the 2000 Charter Review Commission did a great job. The form and structure of the charter, as we are proposing, in large part remains as the form and structure was established in 2000. We are just proposing updates and amendments, as I said earlier, that would typically accompany the passage of time. Term lengths and term limits. Those are issues that come up during every charter review, and indeed came up during our review. This is something we didn't take lightly and we did hear from the people on. And what we heard was, while there's a recognition and understanding that there's some difficulty for elected officials to have to run what is effectively every other year, the people indicated to us that that's a burden that they're willing to impose because that requires the elected officials to go out and meet with and speak to their constituents more frequently than they would have to if there was a four-year term. Term limits, we heard plenty of that from the people as well. And at the end of the day, it is you who decides the term limits of your elected officials. If the elected official is doing a good job, you will continue them in office. If they are not, you will not. It is up to you to make that determination, and it's not something we included in the charter. Deputies, and in particular, the requirement that the deputies reside in the city of Saratoga Springs. We did acknowledge that there is some difficulty in finding qualified deputies to serve in this capacity, but it was important that those deputies reside in the city of Saratoga Springs and feel the effect of their governance th through their elected official. And the responsibilities and duties of the existing city council members are largely consistent. We're gonna go through what the changes are, but for the most part, we have the five commissioners. There's proposal, you'll hear more about the uh, two potential at-large members. But by and large, the responsibilities and duties of the existing council members are largely intact. And Mike will uh, give us a discussion on the proposed uh, amendments and revisions. Thank you, Vince.